Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Abraham from Air and Air Dermatology Specialist. And in this segment, we shall be covering uh, conditions that have uh, a clinical similarity to lichen planus. So we call them lichenoid dermatoses. So we shall start today with a short video on lichen striatus. And you see who gets this condition, how does it look like, and uh, how do we actually manage it. So starting off uh, from the, the pictures that I have displayed on my screen, you'll find that we have uh, someone or uh, patients having lesions uh, following a particular pattern on the body, which you can say may be a linear uh, type of uh, distribution, as you can see in the picture here, as you can see here, as well as in this picture, as well as in this picture, as well as in even this last picture. So you may keep asking yourself, what, how, why, uh, how do we end up here? How does that someone get this? And what do we call this? So this is what we call uh, lichen striatus. So lichen striatus, uh, we are going to see the details of how it comes about and how are we actually uh, manage it. So uh, it is uh, one of the uncommon uh, skin conditions, which is self-limiting. And uh, most of the times it is asymptomatic and primarily can affect uh, affects children, though some cases have been reported even in what? Even in adults. So it is also called uh, linear lichenoid dermatosis because it has a clinical picture uh, that looks like lichen. So you, you have the flat topped uh, papules and plaques. So that's what we call lichenoid. And then since it follows a line, it, it gets the name uh, linear. And then uh, sometimes you can also call the brush uh, be called the brush core linear acquired inflammatory skin eruption, which we call blaze. So uh, these synonyms usually now describe for you actually how the condition is. So for, for example, this last one is saying brush core, which means that the condition will follow the brush code lines of development and then linear acquired that means that you come on after birth so someone will be born normally and then later on they develop this uh, skin disorder and then later on uh, it's also called inflammatory meaning that is some inflammation in the skin and skin eruption that just means uh, something like a rush so we, we, uh, the epidemiology goes like this. So uh, uh, like in striatus, primarily affects children uh, aged between four months uh, to 15 years of age with a median onset of about uh, two to three years. So it is a little bit uh, not very common, but when you see it, at least you'd have an idea of what it is called. And uh, the, 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 the gender in terms of them being affected, more commonly seen in uh, male children compared to female with a ratio of about uh, two to one. And uh, uh, if you had to look at how does it come about, if you had to ask yourself, the actual etiology is still not known. Uh, as opposed for like in Panas where they have, we have a, pro, a proposed a theory of how it comes about. In this case, it is not yet known, but it has been postulated to be maybe due to somatic mutations leading to aberrant crons of uh, epidermal cells uh, that uh, give rise to the uh, clinical picture that we see. So it's most likely maybe a somatic mutation. You know, you know uh, mutations uh, can either be prezygomatic or postzygomatic mutations. So the postzygomatic mutations also called somatic imitations, these ones occur on already differentiated cells that have taken on a particular line of uh, development. Uh, either they're going to uh, to become skin cells, brain cells, bone cells. So if an, a mutation occurs in those cells, then it is postdiagomatic. But if a mutation occurs in the, in the X chromosome, Y chromosome, uh, then that one is there. Uh, uh, pre-zygomatic uh, mutation. So in this case, there's a thinking that maybe the skin cells within the epidermis undergo a mutation that give rise to the uh, epidermal cells that are verrucous, that hyperproliferate, and give rise to the uh, conditions that we see. But uh, the, uh, the association is there, but not yet confirmed. Then there's also a thinking that maybe there's an environmental trigger, uh, which can either be uh, virus or bacteria, and sometimes even familial occurrences have been noted in some case reports where maybe the mother had it and the son had, has it now, so that uh, kind of picture. So in the immune response, we see it uh, being more driven by the cytotoxic T cells that, uh, that are involved uh, in the lesional skin, and this gives 
makes a picture that maybe it is it may be a cell mediated immunological reaction against these mutated or damaged uh, keratinocytes located in a particular uh, uh, um, uh, distribution or in, in a particular line of your uh, skin. So in the clinical picture, uh, usually someone will present with a symptomatic uh, or sometimes uh, intense pruritic eruption that follows Blaschko's line of development and uh, it will continue to uh, to spread along that line where you will now get either clustered flat tops or like canoid papules. Uh, some of them will be coalescing to form plaques. They can be skin colored, hypopigmented or even hyperpigmented. Then this distribution, the distribution of these lesions will be following the blush lines of development. And primarily it has been seen on the extremities that is the up and lower, but occasionally it can also be seen on the trunk, in the neck, and then as well in the what? Or, uh, on the face. So most of them, most of the cases, they get spontaneous resolution after a few years to months. Uh, but uh, as the lesions disappear, they can leave post-inflammatory, hyper or hyper pigmentation, especially in people with a, a dark skin type, especially Fitzpatrick types uh, five uh, and six. So this is how the clinical picture will look like. We have this verrucous, uh, so we have this lichenoid uh, papules and plaques along brush code lines of development. This is how it will be like, as you can see here, they follow this line all the way through to the bum bum. Then in the pathology, if you take off a biopsy, histology will be variable having features depending on the type and the edge of the lesion. So if it is like anoid tissue, it will give you like a lichenoid tissue reaction with the uh, hair uh, follicles and sweat glands being involved. Uh, common finding including exo exocytosis, parakeratosis, dyskeratosis, and then also vacuola uh, degeneration in the epidermis. And remember when you're talking about interface dermatitis, Interface dermatitis or histology, these are the conditions that have a pathology along the basal cell uh, layer of the epidermis, uh, the DEG, uh, the epidermodermal junction. So that is the interface, right? So under interface dermatitis, we can classify them into two arms. On one side, we can have them being lichenoid. On the other side, we can have them being vacuola interface dermatitis. So if it is lichenoid, you are now on the side of lichen planus and related conditions that can give a similar pattern. Then vacuola interface, it will be on the other arm. So the condition we are dealing with right now, it will give you vacuola degeneration uh, in the in the epidermis. So other features that you can see, you will see other things like dyskeratosis, parakeratosis, and then exocytosis. Uh, so on him, uh, immunohistochemistry, you'll be able to see uh, CD3 cells, uh, CD plus cells uh, infiltrating the lesion of skin, and predominantly you can also see the cytotoxic uh, T cells. As you can see here, uh, in this picture, we are seeing uh, hyperkeratosis with focal parakeratosis, and uh, you have a lichenoid and pervascular lymphocytic infiltrate. Let me let me explain for you this so that you see. So in this case, you know that you're supposed to have the stratum, uh, corneum, granular layer, stratum spinosum, then you have the basal layer. So at the basal layer, at the junction here, the integrity is now not preserved. You see that you cannot well highlight the basal layer, right? It has been destroyed. Uh, and then if you magnify further, yeah, this one cannot magnify anymore, you will see that in this case, you will have um, vacuola degeneration processes where you have the basal cells forming vacuoles. A vacuole is, it is a big cell with a clear cytoplasm and then around nucleus. So that's what you'll see on the interface uh, area. And then you have this dense lymphocytic infiltrate, and then you can also see some dead uh, keratinocytes in there. And uh, this is what you call vacuolar interface, and that's what you will see uh, with uh, this uh, condition, like in striatus. So what are the differentials? So in the differentials, we shall look at all those conditions that can have a linear uh, uh, pattern or, or, or distribution or even configuration. So things like linear lichen like planus can be a differential brachkitis, which is just inflammation along the blush code lines. And then we can also have linear host versus uh, 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 graft versus host disease. And then other conditions like linear porokeratosis, linear psoriasis, linear uh, 
uh, uh, inflammatory linear verrucoaceptum or nevus, and then linear uh, lichen sclerosus and linear diarrhea's disease. All these are possible differentials when you are suspecting uh, uh, lichen striatus. So the key things that we are supposed to remember here is that one, most of the cases are symptomatic. It is a linear dermatosis, and it will have these lichenoid papules varying from either pink to hyperpigmentation. And then sometimes you get rapid appearance of mud lesions along the lines of blush core. Spontaneous resolution is possible. Sometimes they can also extend to involve the nails, so you end up with nail dystrophy. So thank you very much. That was our segment on lichen striatus. See you in the next video. Remember to subscribe, share, and comment.